letter to my 24-year-old past self from his 32-year-old future self as assurance that despite going through very dark, difficult, and disturbing times, that there is indeed light at the end of the tunnel. Dear Paul, by now you've received news of your malignant brain cancer. You've had your brain surgery and are currently on your seventh day of being wide awake out of nine days straight, terrified, wondering when a person would die without sleep. Receiving some of the most life-shattering news, being traumatized from a near-death experience in the hospital, and not even having access to sleep to begin to process any of this is like a form of torture, to say the least. Things have been difficult for you for quite some time now with your double vision, partial facial paralysis, intense fatigue, and the beginning of your bizarre sleep interference. And I hate to say it, but this is only the beginning of things. Chemotherapy and radiation, while they take care of the cancer, will also amplify some of the already uncomfortable symptoms that you're dealing with. High levels of anxiety, panic, obsessive negative thinking patterns, being terrified of walking, migraines, and waking up 30 times every single night will be your norm for the next year and a half. I'm writing you this because I know that suicide, although you're far from being close to acting on it, out of love for your family, friends, girlfriend, and dog's sake, it has entered your mind as being one of the only possible ways of escaping insanity as well as death from sleep deprivation. While all of this is without a doubt your reality and will be for quite a while, I am here to tell you that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that you're going to come out of this more mentally and physically balanced than you've ever been in your entire life. From morning to night, you're going to begin to obsessively research about health and wellness from all different cultural perspectives as you're able to. Reading medical literature, listening to lectures, endlessly experimenting with pharmaceuticals, supplements, diet changes, herbs, chiropractors, acupuncturists, yoga, breath work, meditation, qigong, different philosophies, and the list just goes on. And over time, very slowly but surely, you are going to take enough small steps that add up to building a very strong mental, physical, and spiritual foundation in your life. And ironically, out of everything that you experiment with and implement into your life, you're going to find that a consistent daily breathing practice has been the most beneficial and transformative. I know you're not going to believe me about that for many different reasons, especially since I'm from the future. <laughs> But for one being that we really have no idea how much we are capable of in life until we become familiar with the subtle nature and workings of our breath, body, and mind. Discovering how life-changing this is for you, especially for helping you get through an insanely dark time, you're going to go on to make it your life mission to share this knowledge with others for the rest of your life in some way starting in 2021, teaching mindset guidance classes. Believe it or not, you're going to guide a breathing, body, and meditation practice with the nurses in the department that you get treated in. You're going to gain the interest from an immunologist to develop a wellness practice to offer to patients to do a study on as well as gain interest to expand that wellness practice to be offered through the cancer department that you get treated in. 
I know this all sounds impossible and beyond your reach, but I'm here now, seven years later, delivering a TED Talk to tell you that we made it. Keep going and follow your breath. Looking back on that dark time of my life when I was internally and externally exploring the mind, I developed a very large fascination with learning about the placebo effect. Time and time again, science has come across cases and cases of patients shown to improve their health conditions by just simply believing that their treatment will work. Now, I don't know about you, but just about every time in my life that I can think of the placebo being spoken about, it's been with a sort of negative connotation. Something like, oh, that's just the placebo effect. As if it's of little importance and something that should be brushed aside. The definition which we've laid on the placebo effect has made us have a very specific relationship with it so far in history. And I believe that it's time that we resurface it and redefine it to better serve humanity. If you were to ask me how I would define the placebo effect, it would be something like a glimpse of the potential of the human mind's capacity to self-regulate and heal using its inner intelligence. 2022, well after two full centuries of science recognizing this phenomena, for some reason, there's been little to no effort placed on researching how to tap into it on an individual level when needed. I'm not here to claim that I've cured anything in my life, but I do personally believe that the breathing, body, mind, and spirit practices which I've brought into my life have at least allowed me to become somewhat familiar with the deep part of my mind which is responsible for the placebo effect. If we can spend billions and billions of dollars externally exploring, going to the moon, then I feel that internally exploring with even just a tiny fraction of this amount of funding should be no issue at all. I'd like to call to action to those who are in a position to be able to research this in great depth through rigorous studies and learn how to teach individuals how to tap into this and implement it into our medicine system as well as throughout our culture. Now, one of the more favorable things about this type of research is that we don't necessarily have to wait and rely on studies to come out for it to make it to our lives. This type of research can begin in each and every one of our lives by simply stilling ourselves, closing our eyes, and turning our attention inward. I'd like to invite you to join me in a very simple breathing body and mind practice, which I believe when done consistently can allow one to become familiar with the deep part of themselves which innately knows how to nourish life. So together we will slowly close our eyes, turn our attention inward. Together become aware of the quality of our breath in this moment, the speed of it, the depth. Become aware of how we're currently holding our physical body, noticing any tension throughout it, and becoming aware of our current thoughts and emotions. And together, beginning to slightly slow down and slightly deepen our breath. And breathe into certain areas in our body that we notice tension in loosen them up. And together, create some sort of space between a deep part of ourself and our thoughts and emotions, as if we were watching a flock of birds fly by. And together, we will tell ourselves, 
The placebo is a glimpse of the potential of our mind's capacity to self-regulate and heal using its inner intelligence. And again, the placebo is a glimpse of the potential of our mind's capacity to self-regulate and heal using its inner intelligence. And this last time before we repeat it, I'd like to ask you to not only say it and think it with the left side of your brain, but truly try and feel it using the right side of your brain and placing your hand to your heart. And again, the placebo is a glimpse of the potential of our mind's capacity to self-regulate and heal using its inner intelligence. Slowly opening our eyes, allowing our hand to fall towards our lap. While resurfacing and redefining the placebo would without a doubt improve the quality of many of our lives, we can look and examine every little area of our life where we've laid definitions upon. Every single thing in our life has been defined in a very specific way, causing ourselves to have a very specific relationship with it. While definitions are needed to be able to work with things, I find it to be just as important to keep things open for redefining and updating in the future to better serve us. I'd like to end this paraphrasing a quote that I find fitting from a monk from Plum Village, Brother Tian Kai. Sometimes language can conceal more than it reveals. Thank you. <laughs>